Yes, welcome to Hen House Studios Live, and today we are honored to have the distinguished guest, Pete Holland. How are you doing today, Pete? Very well, Harlan. Thank right. you very much. Thanks for having me. All right. Pete comes from a tradition of uh, singer-songwriter, guitar players who have mastered a style that I really like, a, a picking style, a very complicated, incredible style that makes the guitar sound as if it was five or six instruments all going at once. Maybe you could tell a little bit about how that happened, how you developed this style. Well, you know, I was pretty much self-taught until uh, I heard this guy playing. His name is Pete Steinberg. He's a local, a West L.A., Venice uh, local guy. And he, uh, he teaches quite a bit, and I, I liked his style, and I, uh, I went with him and, and learned from him. And now I'm sort of, uh, like he says, uh, there's no turning back now. I'm a, I'm a picker now, and that's, that's how it is. So when did you start playing guitar and writing songs and singing? Well, I, I had a little, uh, little history of bass guitar little saxophone when I was younger but I, I would say I picked up guitar about six seven years ago in college and and from that point forward have not have not stopped oh. you know started writing songs maybe two and a half years ago three years ago mm -hmm. oh, you're already accomplished for, for writing for such a short time another interesting thing about Pete is that he was a full ride scholarship football player at UCLA he played at the, in the Rose Bowl and so I imagine you, you played a lot of sports as, in high school as well. And so how did you balance the music and, and, and the sports? Was there ever one that you felt that you were going to, wanted to pursue more? Or how, how, how did that work? You know, I, I would say I never really balanced them because I was, I was into both when I was a kid and then I got to high school and then you sort of have to, uh, have to opt to take one path or another. And I, and I went with sports and I you know, stayed with that through college and you know, played a little guitar on the side. but. Generally, I, I took the athletic route through high school and college, and then, you know, now that that's done, I'm sort of on, uh, on the other side again. So did you enjoy playing football at UCLA? Yeah, it was, you know, it's great. It's, a, it's an experience not a lot of people get to have. Um, you know, there's, uh, you know, it's a ride. It's, it's up and down, and it's, it's traveling, and it's winning and losing, and and, and, and you, you weren't you the captain? You were the captain. I was yeah. captain of the defense. Yeah, we. Uh, it wasn't one of the best periods in UCLA's defensive history. Um, but still, you were the captain. Which I was. was you yeah, know, it, it's a highly an honor. rated school. Anyhow. Yeah, I mean. it, it was an honor and it was a, a lot of fun. Um, but you know, I like moving on. I football and I sort of parted friends, and you know, I I didn't want any more from football, and foot, uh, football didn't want any more from me. So. Oh, very um, well said. Yeah, it's nice to nice to move on and try something new, you know. Oh, that's great. So anyway, why don't you play us a great, you know, one of your great songs? Uh, set this up for us and let us know what we're going to hear. Okay, um, this song is less than a year old. It's called Friends Like These. Um, got how to, uh, you know, it's just a, a song I wrote about uh, some things I see. You know, people sort of stabbing each other in the back, letting them down. You know, things everyone sees and. You know, maybe you see more of it in L.A. than other places. I don't know. Mm, life experience. Um, huh? Right. But, uh, All right. Here we go. This is called Friends Like These. Pete Holland, take it away. Well, I can picture you on Franklin and Vine Street Sitting with your arms around your knees you need a friend to drive you home, but you're sitting there alone. Just you and the hookers and police. And if I could explain the world, I'd tell you to get some dreams that might come true. Instead of living on fantasies and wishing, I guess that's what we need to get us. Yes, we do. Dead and destroyed. 
production. Who needs thank yous and pleas? A thorn in your side, doubt and jealousy. Who needs that? Friends like these. I saw your girl this morning, and I know just what you're talking about. She's gonna put a smile on me, fuck your husband when you're gone. It tells you you look pretty when it counts. And I sleep with both eyes open, but she keeps her back to me in bed. Yeah, I love when she's in town. Don't leave your money sitting around It's gone every time I turn my head And who needs scammers and liars Who needs flammers and thieves A thorn in your side Adversaries and enemies Who needs that? Friends like these A thorn in your side Doubt and jealousy Who needs that? Friends like these Nice. I'm glad Thank you didn't you hurt. Much. Glad you didn't hurt your fingers playing football. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to pick like that. Yeah. Now that's a style that you don't really hear. I've been in, in in Los Angeles, Southern California, for a long time, and I don't really see too many young players playing that style. It seems to be more of a style you, you hear back east or in the south. And there's some influences there that you, people that you listen to, other than the teacher you're talking about, Pete, was Pete Steinberg. Is there, is there any other people that you heard on recording that got you into this style? Um, you know, I, I got to say, not, not before, you know, I was influenced by this guy. And, you know, he's an old guy. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Pete, but you're an old guy. <laughs> and uh, so through him, I sort of, I was uh, introduced to guys like Mance Lipscomb and Mississippi John Hurd and Merle Travis and those kind of, you know, old-timey finger-picker kind of guys. Um, was your, st was, your st was your style already headed in that direction, or, or, or did you adopt this style? I mean, no, my style was very, um, you know, I was self-taught. I, I listened to a lot of Neil Young and, and Bob Dylan and stuff like that. It was very strummy, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and folk-oriented. Uh, right? Yeah, folk-oriented. Um, you know, those are my favorite songwriters, but it got to a point where I needed some, you know, I had sort of reached a plateau in my guitar playing in terms of teaching myself, and so I had to find a guy that that could take me somewhere else, mm -hmm. and that was that guy. So I was very, you know, you know, just just uh, it's kind of dull a mm -hmm. lot of the stuff I was doing, and I still do it sometimes. Um, but uh, you know, this is just another, uh, just sort of another twist. You know? Definitely expands the music. And yeah, it always really makes and, it sound full. Yeah, and it you know stands out, especially you know when when no one else is doing it. Mm -hmm. And I know you've been doing some recording. Actually, you've been doing some recording at the Hen House and other places. And you've been you've been working with some other great musicians. And I know you've been working with Kave mm -hmm. Rostegar, great bass player. And what's that experience been like for you, getting your stuff down uh, so other people can hear it, recording it? What's that process like? Um, well, you know, I like it and I hate it. Um, I like it because it, you know I play solo, so it's cool to come in and work with you or Kave. Um, but it, recording is very perfection-oriented, mm -hmm. or, or you have a tendency to want to be perfect because, you know, it's a lot easier for someone to listen to a recording of you than to actually hear you. So, um, you know, and, and that's, to me, that's not the nature, number one, of my music, but the nature of music. You know, it's, a, it's something where sometimes you screw up, and, and that just kind of adds to the authenticity. That's what it's come to, though, because since with the you know, advent of this high technology, Pro Tools, and all this editing, the music is becoming perfect, where, when before it was really just about the performance, right. you know? Um, so it's, yeah, I hear what you're saying. You, there, you know, there's something gained and something lost with all this, this perfection, you know, especially in the style that you play, play in. It's really a style that's meant to be heard live, I feel, you know? It's really... 
I love it. I think it's a great style. Yeah, you, you know, you always want to put your best foot forward mm -hmm. on a recording, but then again, you can, with Pro Tools and, and, and digital technology, it's so easy to keep going back to the same thing, and then you just realize, wait a minute, I'm, you know, it's like one to lose the last five pounds. Like, you're, you're never happy. You always want right. to lose five more. So sometimes you just got to put something down. You may not love with it, but you got you to stick with it. Mm -hmm. All right, well... Pete was at the Hen House, uh, it was probably about six weeks ago, and recorded some music, and we uh, happened to film it, and we'd like to show everybody. You guys ready in there with the clip? Okay, all right, let it roll. Let's, let's let the clip roll. Um, and funny, you know, and the, the third song is called Friends Like These, which is like, if, uh, you know, it, it, it's been explained here just from what's going on in this bar tonight. Um, hey, stop it, stop it. Dude, call the fucking cops. I'm calling the cops, because if I don't, I'm going to kick his fucking ass. Stop it. Stop it. Dude, do yourself a fucking favor and don't come near me right now. Yeah, we got an unruly bar patron over here, and I just punched him twice, and I'm going to do it again, yeah, and he won't leave. Yeah, I work here. My name is Pete. You ready? Please put your hands together for Pete Holland. Uh, well, no comment. Um, but, uh... Well, I can picture you on Franklin and Vine Street Sitting with your arms around your knees You need a friend to drive you home But you're sitting there alone If I could explain the world, I'd tell you to get some dreams that might come true. Instead of living on fantasies and wishing, but I guess that's what we need to get us through. Come on. Right, well, you know. <laughs> In fact, okay, I admit it, I staged this, like, for your benefit. Just so it, it seems like I, I work in this sort of, like, Old West Roadhouse, you know? bunch of rowdy gold miners coming in at the end of a long day. Who needs debt and destruction? Looking to fight. Who needs thank yous and please? A thorn in your side, doubt and jealousy. Who needs that? Friends like these. But, you know, I'm, I'm liking the song right now. So, uh, you know, and obviously it's, it's relevant. That's, uh, you know, obviously from... From what happened here tonight, it's it's quite relevant. And I saw you, girl, this morning, and I know just what you're talking about. How she'll put a smile on, fuck your husband when you're gone. But tells you you look skinny, and that's what counts. And I sleep with both eyes open. Okay, anyway. Cause she keeps her back to me when it bed. Yeah, I love when she's in town. Don't leave your money sitting around. The lyrics, I just think I, uh... Every time I turn my head. That's always been basically the number one thing I admire in music and the number one thing that reaches me. And, you know, to me, the great songwriters are, are ones that, you know, you hear a line and you go, man, you know, I've, I've felt that way, but I've never been able to say it. Who needs scammers and liars? Who needs flammers and thieves? Thorn in your side, adversaries and enemies. Who needs that? Friends like these. Thorn in your side, adversaries and enemies. Who needs that? Friends like these. Camera material. Uh -huh. You guys get a lot of you guys get a lot of uh, not on camera material on camera from me, definitely. <laughs> oh god. Yes, Pete Holland. That was 
one of my most favorite clips, and we've made quite a few. I had a good time making that one for obvious reasons, but we won't get into that. No, it sort of speaks for itself. Speaks for itself. So, you know, one thing I've noticed that, you know, you're really putting yourself out there these days. You're increasing your, you know, Pete Holland internet presence and sending out, you know, emails to people, letting them know about your shows. And what's that been like? Um, you know, it's, it's, the music industry is definitely in a, in a huge crisis right now, and I think it's the right way to go. You, it's all about self-promotion right now, and artists can do quite well by themselves without the help of a, of a company. Though it helps to have, you know, a record company behind you. But, mm -hmm. you know, how's it like, you know, putting yourself out there, you know, marketing yourself, exposing yourself? It's, it's, you know, what's that like? You know, I'm, uh, I'm not much of a salesman. So I'm, you know, I, I do what I must. You know, I'm sending out the emails. Um, I've got a website going. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's easy to... It's it's easy to do you know with the internet um, and everything. It's easy for for an artist to do it himself or herself. But uh, you know it's also uh, it's also just more to do. And it's mm -hmm. it's you know getting flyers out there and sending out emails. Um, and the internet you know it's a it's a great thing. It's a it's a great tool. Um, if you you know it's a way of letting you know dozens or hundreds or thousands of people know that you're playing. Um, but you know like I said it's. Uh, it, it just sort of is a confusion. There are so many people out there and so many emails going out that right. it's hard to hard to make yours stand out, or it's hard to get people to come to your site and download your stuff. So, um, you know, it's there's just definitely always something to do. You know, always always an email to send out, or always a new song to put up on your site and, and stuff like that. So, what's it like for the solo singer singer songwriters as far as uh, performance venues? Is there a lot of opportunities? Yeah, I think there are. Um, you know. Like we were just flipping through the LA Weekly, and there are you know so many clubs, so many places to play, um, but but we're in a town where everyone wants to be a star and people play for free. Um, I don't have a problem with that. One thing I notice, it's sometimes hard to get on a bill with similar artists, mm -hmm. um, you know, which is which is going to be the best thing if you right, want. especially for the audience member, they know what they're getting. Yeah, know? and you you know you want your crowd to come early and listen to the guy before you, and mm -hmm. and you want them to stay after because they're gonna if they like your stuff, which mm -hmm. hopefully they do, um, they're gonna want to hear who's next. But you know if I go play solo somewhere and I'm you know after a rap act and before a metal act, it's it's not very conducive to the to the fans staying no, the whole night. Of course, you know? yeah. So it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not even smart business on the, on the booking agent, right. I think. Well, anyway, since we're not in a club, we have this incredible studio and this opportunity to hear you play. What are you going to play for us now when you set, up, set us up a song? All right, this is a song uh, that you know a lot of people ask me who's it about, and I just say it's about me um, more than any other person, and it sort of speaks for itself. Make sure I'm in tune here. Uh 
hundred dollars, borrow it you can. And if you wanna be let down, then let me be your man. And I'm not saying I'm leaving for sure. One of us can't stay. I don't love you, babe. I'm sorry to say. I don't love you, but I guess that's how it goes. If anything should change, then you'll be the first to know. But I don't have the guts, so I sing what I can say. I'm in your way, and I don't love you, babe. I'm sorry to say. Yes, Pete Holland. You're ready for those big summer folk festivals, aren't you? Well, <laughs> it sounds I, like that way to me. I would be ready. I would be ready, yes. Um, yeah, there's so many out there. Like I said uh, before, just that's the thing about booking. you gotta got to get it out there. I'm really proud of the stuff I did at the Hen House. That'll be my new demo, and you just got to spread it. Are you going to try to make, it. You gonna finish, make a whole record, you think? Because you, you have almost enough tunes recorded now. Yeah, huh? I think, uh, well, you know, I've got enough tunes, but I want to do... I want to do new stuff, um, mm -hmm. and I've got a lot of stuff I've recorded at home or uh, sort of a lower fi kind of recording. Mm -hmm. um, what do you record on at home? Just a digital eight track. You know, mm -hmm. it's uh, it's easy and it sounds decent, but it's not really something I would feel good about selling for you know ten or twelve right. or fifteen bucks a so pop. So it's like a writing tool, basically. Yeah, you know, and it's. Um, you know, it's what I use instead of memory sometimes. You know, exactly, you just sit yeah. and, and play something and, and it's there in case you want to use it later. So how does the process work for you when you write? Um, sometimes it doesn't work. <laughs> of course, um, yeah. Yeah, it, uh, you know, I don't know. My method is sort of that I don't have a method. A lot of times I uh, will think of a line that I think is worthy of, of building a song around. A vocal I, line or, or um, a guitar line? Well, usually a line, a, a lyric, you know, mm -hmm. um, one line, two lines, maybe a verse, or maybe a word, you know, and I, uh, I sort of go from there. Um, a lot of times I'll, I'll do a verse or a line, then I'll think of the melody and then go back and sort of fill it in. Um, you're not comfortable, I have a feeling you're not comfortable, a lot of folk singers are, are uncomfortable singing without their guitar, so I imagine when you record you like to do both at the same time usually. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, when I'm when I sing and I am not playing guitar, I find myself trying too hard to be a good singer. Um, hmm, and interesting. You know, I I like doing both at the same time. Mm -hmm. I I feel like if I'm if I'm playing or if I'm recording, I should be doing both at the same time because that's what you're going to get if I'm playing live. Right. So if I'm to screw up because I'm distracted by guitar or vocals, then that's what I should be doing on on the record. No, and it's great. I mean, there's a lot of musicians that I work with. They they, they can't even imagine doing it the other that, you know doing it the other way of, of actually doing the vocals separate from the guitar. Mm -hmm. A lot of them don't even want to wear headphones. You know, yeah. it's like it, yeah, it's you know it's kind of unnatural for me. It I know it's it's easier to do when you do it separately because uh, just the the logistics of it are easier. So you know I'm adaptable. I can go either way, but generally I prefer to do it at the same time. And the thing I noticed, you know, you are a solo performer, but once we got you working with a band, uh, you know, I was, I was actually fortunate enough to drum on some of your stuff, and and then we bought it. You brought in a bass player, and you know, it, your music is really conducive for the ensemble setting. Do you ever think about that? You know, for the future, you're going to do some performance with with an ensemble rather than solo, or yeah, I you know, I would love to, and I love uh, what I love about it is that when I. You know, I've been playing by myself for so long that when I think of a song or, or when I'm playing something, it, it, it comes out as a one, one person kind of thing, and that's how I hear it. And then when I get a chance to work with you or Kave, it sort of takes on this shape that I never even imagined. Mm. Um, and not that, it, you know, not that it gets too far out, but it just fills in in, in spaces. Um, and it's something I don't really think about a lot when I'm playing by myself, but it's, it's always a pleasure to get in there and and just get get musical input and have people sort of add their add their well, to it's it. it's also a beautiful thing from from a performance standpoint. If if somebody says I only have the limited amount of money for a show, then you just say, well, then you get me. If they say, well, I, we have more money, then you say, well, great, right. I can bring my band. Yeah, which is which potential is, bargaining chip. Which isn't always the case. There's a lot of singers who don't play. Yeah, so it's actually a great thing. Mm -hmm. and it, it can actually help with your longevity. Well, we just have a couple minutes left, so why don't you take us out and set us up a 
another song. You know, okay. people, people would rather hear uh, you play than hear me talk. Yeah. So. Or me talk. For that <laughs> um, okay, here's a song called Esmeralda. Um, I wrote this several years ago, and my girlfriend doesn't like it that much, but I like it, so... a word that they speak in the mountains One word to say what you mean Nobody there will belittle your thoughts When you wake you'll remember your dreams The riches lay up in the mountains Where the granite is streaked with ore when your feet are let down and there's no one around Like a fool you'll keep searching for more And it's cold in Aurora tonight Someone has stolen my thunder There's a man put my lightning in jail Takes pleasure in robbing from me all I love And his fortune was lost long ago Tell me where have you gone, Esmeralda? What have you done with my gold? She whispers a promise It lay there below in the ground Unforgiving and cold And it's cold in Aurora tonight I know nobody's sleeping Her delicate features hold up in the light An old saloon echoes with music It's the feeling that to you they lie When you wander the sound Sweet to your ears, but fall silent when you set foot inside. Thank you very much. Hey.